Turn your Bible with me to the Gospel according to St. Luke, chapter 4, verse number 1 and 2. Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, returned from the Jordan and was led by the Spirit in the desert, where for 40 days he was tempted by the devil. He ate nothing during those days, and at the end of them he was hungry. The word of God says here, Jesus full of the Holy Spirit. Say with me, Jesus full of the Holy Spirit. So when you read about Jesus, it's a very powerful description of who Jesus is. The Bible says, Jesus full of the Holy Spirit. Probably you can put your name right there. Would you like to read? Hmm? How does it go? Go ahead. Samuel, full of the Holy Spirit. I want to let you know this morning, everything that belongs to Jesus, it rightfully belongs to you. So the word of God says here, Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit of God. It was full of the Holy Spirit. God would like to give the Holy Spirit to you, not in installments, but he would like to give the Holy Spirit to you in fullness. Amen? Amen. So, you need to pray and ask God this morning, God, give me the fullness of the Holy Spirit. A lot of times, you know, people have a wrong understanding about the Holy Spirit. Some people think, no, I'm not perfect, so I will not get the Spirit of God. That's not what the Bible says. Every one of us are imperfect. None of us, we are perfect. The Spirit of God is given to you to make you perfect. Amen? So that's what we need to understand. When Peter writes his epistle, he says uh, to strangers in the world and to God's elect, he says, uh, you have been chosen according to the predestinated work of the Father and the sanctifying work of the Holy Spirit. Amen? So he says, now we have been chosen according to the predestination that God had for you. Not only that, and through the sanctifying work of the Holy Spirit. That means, uh, you know, simply to say, the Spirit of God has been given to you to move forward in the holiness of Jesus Christ. Amen? The only person who can help you is the Holy Spirit of God. Amen? So don't have any kind of guilt or any kind of hesitation to open your mouth and begin to pray and ask God to fill you with the Holy Spirit of God. Amen? All that you need to do is just ask for the Holy Spirit. The Bible says, you know, how much more the Father in heaven will give the Holy Spirit to those who ask Him. Amen? Many don't have it because they don't ask. I know few people, they could have it because they are wrestling with God, they are asking God. Hallelujah. So if you are praying for the baptism of the Holy Spirit, I would like to tell you, don't stop. Keep on praying. Keep on knocking on the door. One of these days, I believe God's going to open the heavens and he's going to descend upon you like a flood, filling you all over. Amen. So here the Bible talks about Jesus saying that he was full of the Holy Spirit of God. I want to tell you that anything that fills you begins to control you. Amen? It doesn't matter how you look on the outside. A lot of times in today's world, when somebody's going to ask you, you know, who are you? Probably, and I don't know what you will say about yourself. Oh, I'm so and so. Maybe you will say your name. If you change your name, will you, will you be still yourself? Yes or no? Yes. yes. If you become a citizen of America, will you be still yourself? 
so now we can have names and how we look and all the stuff but no you don't try to define who you are based on how you look or what you have you need to know who you are based on the person that's on the inside amen what fills you on the inside that matters the most sometimes we develop a wrong identity we try to define ourselves based on the job we have or else the money we have all the friends our background our ethnicity so on and so forth i do not know how you like to define about yourself i do not know what is your identity but when the bible talks about jesus it simply says that he was full of the holy spirit of god amen can you lift your hands and say amen, amen. what you need is the fullness of the holy spirit hallelujah it's not enough just we ask for a little here and there or pray in tongues once in a while but what you need is the fullness of the holy spirit of god the bible say a cup shall run over why this was the most powerful person who ever walked on this earth because he was anointed of god you could be anointed too hallelujah each one of us we can be anointed god is not looking about your for your background or your ability or your education all those things he's just looking at your heart if you are going to be like a little baby a boy or girl would ask god lord fill me to the fullness i want to tell you god is willing to give the holy spirit to you amen because that's the promise of the word of god he says in the last days i'll pour out my spirit upon all those who are flesh your sons and daughters will prophesy they will have vision say amen your old men will dream dreams we are living in the last days whether you like it or not I want to tell you you have so many forces fighting against you. Today you see like now sometime when you pick up the newspaper you get depressed. There's no good news. The only good news you find is only in the word of God. Say amen. amen. Very depressing. Bombless. No, you need to just look around. You know what is happening to our society? still we are living in the world we are not of the world as the lord said but still we are living in the world right we you see a lot of evidences about the work of satan the bible say it comes to steal to kill and to destroy if you want one thing that's going to make a lot of difference in your life in your family even in your children's life you need to be filled by the holy spirit because out in the world i would like to tell you there is a contrary spirit ruling and reigning in every city in every society the bible says when the devil comes he comes to steal to kill and to destroy hello but we have the holy spirit of god no being a normal believer just walking and walk out uh, and you playing religion for too long for many years i want to tell you it doesn't pay off you need to mean business with god right now what fills you on the inside that draws the equation you follow what i'm talking about yes or no what fills you on the inside that that's the most important thing no what is that you feed your mind with what does uh, delight you more where you spend most of the time what are you looking at most of the time what are you listening most of the time no what really goes into your mind in your heart so much so every day the word of god says i think in proverbs 423 it says uh, you know guard your heart about all else guard your heart because out of your heart flow the issues of life yes now everything you see from the world the flesh and the devil today i want to tell you it attacks your heart it contaminates your heart it defiles your heart the world will never say what is right and wrong you follow what i'm talking about yes or no only bible can teach you what is really moral what is 
really ethical even now now the us and many states you know um gay and lesbian relationship is legalized you understand what i'm talking about so now i'm talking about even assembly of god churches many of the churches uh, where the pastors uh, have to be very careful because the law says it's right so the government tells them hey we don't care what your bible says your bible says it may be wrong but no in our nation we through our law we have legalized it right so at the end of the day you know they want the pastors to know you know it is the law that tells you what's right and wrong it may be wrong according to you and your bible but don't speak about that so there are people who walk into the churches uh, if the pastor happens to speak on those subjects what the bible says uh, saying it's sinful they will record and present it to the court a lot of pastors are penalized and some of them are put in prison i'm talking about a christian nation like united states of america so we are moving towards a kind of you know a society where the that which is wrong now it has become right there's a verse in the bible now when you turn your bible and you know, to the book of isaiah chapter 5 quickly so verse number 20 and 21 why don't we stand to feed and read the thing then we can sit down come on quickly isaiah 5 verse 20 and 21 oh to those who call evil good and good evil who put darkness for light and light for darkness who put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter o to those who are wise in their own eyes and clever in their own sight kindly be seated and those people who do not want to read the bible but still want to live in sin they would like to take a refuge under the shadows of the laws but i want to tell you the bible say in the last days when god is going to judge you he will not judge you according to your constitution in your nation you follow what i'm talking about he said only one thing it doesn't matter what is the constitution says god will judge each one of us based on the word of god amen so here the bible says people who are clever in their own eyes you know wise in their own eyes and clever in their own sight what they do they would like to redefine everything else listen to me it's very powerful they would like to redefine everything what god said about the bible says so they would like to tell you no 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 wait wait this is what we want to say it's no longer the word when david you know when he said your word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path are you with me your word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path the word brings forth light psalm 119 130 says the unfolding of your word brings forth light without the word of god you don't simply have any sense of what is right and what is wrong are you listening to what i'm talking about hebrews 5:14 the solid meat is for the mature who by constant use have trained themselves to distinguish good from evil how do you go about distinguishing what is good and what is evil your opinion cannot teach you what is right what's wrong now your society are with me nor your family oh my family and some sometimes we boast about our family our background we can boast only one thing we can boast in the lord amen when peter writes he says you know you know an empty way of life has been handed over to you from your forefathers empty way of life so be careful what are you inherited from your dad and mom your grandparents if they are according to the word of god take it if it is not according to the word of god leave it behind that's an empty way of life it's all just empty yes or no here the bible says what to those who call evil good who put darkness for light and light for darkness 
put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter how do you like it today's generation i would like to say <coughs> they are most vulnerable to all that we read about today on a sunday morning they can listen to the word <coughs> i know what is right and wrong but they, when they go out into the society i want to tell you the enemy is there to intimidate their mind bombard their mind with different options that's what the bible say there's a contrary spirit that rules the world that makes it very essential and a necessity for you and me to be filled by the holy spirit of god if you're not filled by the holy spirit of god i want to tell you no you cannot resist the contrary spirit that moves about controlling nations people societies governments and so on and so forth does somebody understand what i'm talking about yes or no turn with me quickly to ephesians chapter 2 somebody quickly read with me ephesians chapter 2 verse 1 and 2 somebody can turn and read for me listen 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 the bible says you follow the ways of this world and of the ruler of the kingdom of the air come on now what does it talk about it says ruler of the kingdom of the air we are not talking about a kingdom that is physical on the earth we are talking about a spiritual kingdom where satan has his throne and the demonic forces as a rule over in the spirit realm the bible says before we could be born again before we could know jesus some people who know god they come to church they blend with believers now we can go out of church and when we go to work we can change colors and we try to camouflage with the world we follow the ways of the world we think like a worldly person we talk like a worldly person your colleague your friend your neighbor they do not know you're a christian because your values are no different from what they have there's no difference in your language there's no distinction in your lifestyle say so they could not see anything different in your life god said you are the light for the world you are the salt of the earth somebody say amen, amen. that means you have to stand out you can't be numbered you know, one among those who do not follow god because uh, you will be distinguished the way you think the way you talk uh, the way you believe uh, your lifestyle even your word even the words that you use totally different because you're taught by god because you have the mind of christ you are the spirit of christ you are the temple of the holy spirit the bible says ephesians 2:22 says you are being built together to become a dwelling in which god lives by the spirit what a powerful words god lives by his spirit in your body Amen. You are a mobile temple. You carry the presence of God. You carry the glory of God. When Joseph was there, the king could see and say, "Hey, the spirit of God is living in you." When they saw Daniel, the king could, king could say, "Hey, the spirit of God is living in you." Because they were filled by the Holy Spirit. I would like to give a warning to somebody here. I would like that I like you to ask one question. Am I following the ways of God or else I'm following the ways of the world? If you follow the ways of the world, I want to tell you, then you are under the influence of Satan, the ruler in the kingdom of air. Hello. We are not talking about a physical kingdom. We are talking about a spiritual kingdom that has more power, and that kingdom rules over all the physical kingdoms here on earth. You follow what I'm talking about? How the Antichrist is going to come? The whole world is in a getting ready to welcome Antichrist, the false prophet and the beast. Everyone is going to be numbered in this world. The lot of under undercurrents is going on in this world. The world is getting ready to welcome the false messiah as it is written in the Bible. His number is 666. Read your Bible. 
the bible gives us a warning when you follow the ways of the world you come under the influence of the ruler of the kingdom of air your home can come under the influence of satan your business can come under the influence of satan your children and generation come come under the influence of satan when you follow the ways of the world it doesn't matter you have a christian name christian now having christian name doesn't save you coming to church church doesn't save you your pastor doesn't save you the offering that we give it doesn't save us that's the reason jesus came into the world right for god so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son so that whoever believes in him will not perish but have everlasting life sin is such a serious thing in this world it cannot be removed by any other means except by the blood of jesus christ everybody say by the blood of jesus christ hallelujah i would like to give a warning to all of us you need to you know introspect yourself and ask one question am i under the influence of the holy spirit or else i am under the influence of the spirit of the world that's why the bible say jesus was full of the holy spirit what fills you begins to control you some of us you know we may say no i know i want to be good i'm sincere you know i have a sincere faith in god and all those things but still i'm a failure you know the reason because that which is on the inside of you it is not something right with god that's why when i pray i say every spirit which is not from god in my life in my family i disconnect it in the mighty name of jesus christ amen demons follow us he followed even jesus he came to tempt him that's what you read there but the bible say jesus full of the holy spirit you don't have to worry about uh, satan and all the demonic forces how powerful he is uh, what kind of temptation he you know, brings across your life that is not the issue that doesn't matter we are not talking about the strength of satan we are talking about the power of the holy spirit amen if this and a building is full of darkness all that i would like to think about is uh, where is the switch my mind is conditioned to work along with the switch i want to turn it on because i can think only about light i'm not here to do a phd on how the darkness came in how powerful the darkness could be how thick the darkness could be foolishness when the light comes i want to tell you the darkness must give way when the holy spirit begins to take over your life all that is from the demonic kingdom every demonic spirit assigned to you from the pits of hell with your name on it every weapon that is fashioned against you it has to live in the mighty name of jesus christ of nazareth that's why you know in ephesians you read chapter 5 it says do not give devil a foot all devil and the demonic powers they don't have any kind of legal right over your life unless until you give it to them the devil has to come into your life he has to move legally that's what the bible say he moves about like a roaring lion looking for a chance whom he may devour that tells me you know he cannot go about devouring everybody because he knows the one who is in me is greater than he that is in the world amen those who submitted themselves to god james chapter 4 it say resist the devil and he shall flee from you Jesus gave the right and the power and authority to you and me you can cast out demons in my name somebody say amen. amen whatever you burn on earth will be born from heaven whatever you lose on earth will be loosed from heaven hallelujah. hallelujah by the word of authority that we have in our mouth we control the spirit world we can decree and declare we can command we can rule and reign that's a power and authority that god gave you and me somebody say amen. amen when he created adam and eve he said be fruitful and multiply then he said rule over everything hallelujah 
I want to tell somebody, God has not called you to be a spectator. Helplessly watching when the demonic powers invade your life, your family and so on and so forth. You are called to rule and reign. You are supposed to be in charge of your life. In charge of your family. In charge of your sons and daughters. Open your mouth and say, I am not going to be a spectator. Yes, I pray right now in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth that God will fill you with the spirit of militancy. Amen. Hallelujah. We have an aggressive spirit. We are built for warfare. Amen. Somebody say amen. amen. You have everything in your power and your authority to defeat Satan and every power of the enemy. Jesus said, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. He said... I've given you power and authority to overcome all the power of the enemy. Nothing will harm you. You like that word? What does it say? Nothing will harm you. Amen. Just believe and take God at his word. Hallelujah. God has given a lot of promises. Telling you and me, you are more powerful than Satan and all the combined force of demons uh, putting together from hell. You can overcome them just by one word. You can cast them out. The problem comes only when you give a legal ground. Legal ground is always in the secret. The areas where you tend to compromise. You know it's wrong, but still you go about doing the same Having a desire for something which is forbidden, like Eve. God said, don't touch. But she looked, at the, she looked at the fruit. The Bible says uh, it was good for food, pleasing to the eye, and desirable for gaining knowledge. Hey. Sin is always sometimes beautiful. Say beautiful sin. That's why you go after it. The foolishness is God has better things for you. What the devil is showing you, you know, what he would like to offer you is nothing compared to what God gives you. What God gives you, the Bible says, now from Satan, nothing good comes from Satan. There's no winner with Satan. But my Bible says, every perfect and a good gift comes from the Father of heavenly lights. If you want to talk about something that's perfect and good, it comes only from the Father. Because he is perfect. As he is perfect, whenever he gives you something, it's going to be perfect. It's going to be lasting. And he told you and me, no, you did not choose me, but I chose you. For what? I appointed you to bear fruit, fruit that will remain. Anything that God gives, it's going to be abiding. It's going to be everlasting. But what do you receive from the devil? I like to tell you, it gives you only short and pleasure. And he's going to use the same like a bait that we put for the fish. Right? Yes or no? Jesus full of the Holy Spirit. That's the need of the hour. I'm not talking about not getting emotional in worship. You can just get emotional. You can even cry. But that doesn't save you. He can do all kinds of spiritual gymnastics uh, using your body, emotions, all the stuff. But what I'm trying to say is uh, what goes on the inside? What settles down on the inside? What fills you on the inside? When God fills you in all the unwanted things uh, that has taken residence on the inside of you must live in Jesus' name. Every spirit of sin, every spirit of lust, every spirit of violence, anger, Gossip, depression. Now everything must live in Jesus' name. I want to tell somebody, if you are bound by something, let me say. Now usually there's a demon power operating behind every habit, every bondage. Because that gives a legal access to the enemy over your life. Bondages must be broken. Say amen. That's why the sun sets you free, you are free indeed. If that is a problem, God has a solution. If there is a bondage in your life, I got a good news for you. Jesus is the bondage breaker. Amen. Amen. 
sometimes we only talk about problems we don't want to talk about roots sometimes people even get offended now we tell them hey this came because of this now we are looking for some quick quick solutions but you must know the deep rooted problem in your life allowing god to deal with you in the secret when nobody is around you and you and god being left alone talking to god allowing the word to interact with you david prays to god lord search my heart and find if there be any wicked way in me it's easy for me to say no oh, i'm a right, righteous person oh i'm doing good i'm mr righteousness right never ever give a certificate to yourself i don't that too Every time I go to the presence of God I say Lord now show me the things that I could not see in my own life the holy spirit in his grace and mercy he exposes all those areas you follow what I'm talking about otherwise you'll end up not dreaming about yourself oh I'm doing good you live in self righteousness you never know what is your problem are you with me or not today you find that the world is invading into the church we can walk into the church with a worldly attitude church is the body of christ is better let your pastor speak all these things than you die and go to the presence of god and find everything fully upside down truth hurts only to heal amen i want to thank god now every time i go to the presence of god god deals with me some of the innermost things that no man knows about you always would like to get into the roots fruits will never change unless uh, the power of god touches your roots that's why you say now you need to take root in god the bible says if you abide in me and my word abides in you Now what is he talking about? He talks about the word taking root in your life. Somebody say amen. amen. It is not casual reading. Whenever you read the Bible, I would like to tell you there's something more more than what I meets. Treasures are not thrown everywhere. Treasures are always hidden. Amen. If you have a casual attitude, you take your Bible all the now you already decided you want to read only one chapter and you too want to read it fast one chapter 10 minutes how the world do you think god god can speak to you if you want to know about your relationship with god just look at the way how you treat your bible the time is spent with your bible your attitude towards the bible find out now there are powers attacking your life when you take the bible your mind will go away a lot of temptations all those things and other enemy will let you sing a song or even you know do the ministry even give money to the kingdom of god but he will not allow you to read the bible even if you read he will not allow you to focus on the word hello the bible say jesus full of the holy spirit what about you what about me can i say this what do you feel what do you allow to fill your life i told you in the beginning anything that fills you begins to control you if you're filled by the spirit of god i want to tell you then all the fruits of the spirit will begin to manifest in your life say amen, amen. starting from love joy peace patience kindness goodness faithfulness gentleness and self control right self control it's not something existing outside of the holy spirit you know that if you're not abiding if you're not full of the spirit i want to tell you you may think i am a man of self control who told you that it's a lie that you're speaking to yourself the bible doesn't advocate that the bible says they are the fruits of the spirit amen 
when i abide in the word and the word abides in me and i obey the word of god allow myself being led by the spirit of god and the spirit of god fills me on the inside i begin to manifest and produce the fruit what are those things love joy peace patience kindness goodness faithfulness gentleness and self control it starts with love and ends with self control self control is the ability that is given to you by the holy spirit otherwise you know if you're talking about self control you're talking about the power of flesh not the fruit of the spirit that's why we fail as one talking to a man of god and he was telling me now how he takes care of himself and everywhere he goes he's very careful with whom he is with what he's talking about and he is very very extra careful and he said now we are we are talking as pastor this yeah we should be very careful he said no 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 i don't find fault with anybody i don't even blame anybody else he said i am very careful because i don't trust myself what a beautiful statement right i don't trust myself i trust god i think that's a beautiful way of you know expressing our dependency on god don't trust yourself don't trust your ability what do i mean trust god go to god and say lord i cannot take care of myself i want you to take care of me i want you to lead me i want you to you know protect me i want you to speak to me i want you to give me wisdom because i cannot take care of myself i cannot manage my life i need somebody you know that i am depending upon you not even a moment not even a in a second i can live without you i'm helpless without you if you're not going to be with me something will happen to me you follow what i'm talking about and now just throw up your hands to god and say lord i surrender everything i cannot manage my life i need you i think that's beautiful jesus said the same thing saying that you can do nothing apart from me hallelujah somebody lift your hands and say hallelujah praise the lord lift your right hand and say after me lord i depend upon you every single moment i don't trust myself trust my ability but i trust you i trust in the power of the holy spirit save me protect me watch over my life lead me and guide me jesus day my pray amen how beautiful it's going to be every morning you say to god lord uh, without you i am nobody that's why he's called as the shepherd the lord is my shepherd and i shall not want and i want to talk to some self made people self made you know you are the measure of everything concerning your life oh i think so no uh, i can do it oh i thought so i think this is right i i i i i i i think you need to stop using all those things probably you need to look into the word and say yes probably this is what the bible says this is what god says are you with me or not opinion is something that you hold on to but what we need is the conviction that comes through the scriptures by the power of the holy spirit but conviction is that which holds you i'm held by conviction amen it's not just known having values you need to have values that come with conviction i know absolutely that's why jesus said i am the truth he didn't say no, i have a truth mm-hmm. you follow what i'm saying he said i am the truth absolutely absolutely 100% i am the truth there are no two ways about it now today in this world now today now we are affected by the existential philosophy that came about say by the 19th century by philosopher soren a german philosopher he said no there's nothing called absolute truth in this world is a straight attack on the bible When Jesus said I am the truth he said no there's nothing called absolute truth 
There are only two opposite theories. Right? Thesis you have, then you call antithesis. They both come in collision and it forms another thesis, totally new, synthesis, something else. So truth is something that's evolving all the time. My friend, I want to tell you, the Bible is uh, you know, written over so many, by so many authors, say about so many thousands of years spread over. But I would like to tell you the truth of the word of God is relevant for all generations. Amen. It doesn't evolve. Truth is absolute. The Bible says Jesus full of the Holy Spirit. Returned from the Jordan. Today the enemy attacks people who are not filled by the Spirit of God. Every day you know you need to pray to God saying Lord fill me with thy spirit. Fill me with thy spirit. Why am I saying that? You do not know as you walk out of your home. There are contrary spirits, the demonic spirits, territorial powers. That's why the Bible says in Ephesians 6.10, it says, uh, you know, uh, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Open your mouth and say, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Because there's no power and might you have apart from Jesus Christ. Amen? The enemy can just simply knock you down. The word of God says, put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. That means the devil is planning something against your life. Do you know about it? If you do not know about it, I would like to tell you. It's something like a bird getting into a trap. Now today in the city we have a lot of one ways, right? You can go, you can't come back. Trap is just, you know, it has only entry, no exit can go in but you can't come out that's how bondage is created by Satan the lives of people the devil has a scheme against you there are a lot of you know, trap on your way but how do you know about it the Holy Spirit he has to reveal all those things amen the Bible says, I say 54, 17, what does it say? No weapon that is fashioned against you will prevail. When the devil sends a weapon against you, I want to tell you, it has your name on it. You know that? It may be a weapon of sickness, maybe a weapon of curse, uh, or some kind of sin, or some kind of habit. It has your name on it. It is designed for you. It is custom built to work in your life. That's what the Bible says. No weapon that is fashioned against you will prosper. If you are a child of God, this is the heritage of the servants of God. Then it says you will refute every tongue that accuses you. This is their vindication from me, declares the Lord. Somebody say amen. amen. Hallelujah. The Bible says put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of the dark world, against the spiritual force of wickedness in the heavenlies. Therefore put on the full armor of God, so that you may be able to stand your ground after you've done everything to stand. Then it says, you know, you can wear the belt of truth. That's very important. That holds all the other weapons. Right? Belt of truth buckled around your waist. Breastplate of righteousness in place. And your feet fitted with the readiness that comes through the gospel of peace. Take up the shield of faith by which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Say amen. amen. That's why you need the word. Word gives you faith. If you have faith, you can demolish, extinguish, neutralize, destroy, Everything that is sent against you by demonic powers, by powers of witchcraft from the pits of hell, no matter how powerful it is, it cannot attack you because you have the shield of faith. Amen. Somebody say amen. amen. Then it says put the helmet of salvation and 
Take the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Pray in the spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. After you put on the entire armor of God, the Bible says, pray in the spirit. Somebody shout, pray in the spirit. Just casual, baby like pray. It's not going to help you. Just grow up. Thank you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for this day, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for this food, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I'm going out, Lord. I'm coming back, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Now protect me, Lord. Hello. Stop it. Pray like an adult. When you were a little baby and you came to the Lord, that's going to be fine. But not 20 years is over, 30 years is over. You are praying like a baby. The Bible said, pray in the spirit. Grow up. Powers of hell all around you. Looking for a chance to attack you. Your husband, your wife, your children, your sons and daughters. Do you know about it? How will you fight them back? The Bible says, pray in the spirit. Somebody say, pray in the spirit. Hallelujah. Pray in the spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. I pray in Jesus name. No, every one of us, we must learn to pray in the spirit. That's why the Bible says that you must be filled by the spirit. So that you can pray in the spirit. Are you blessed this morning? Get ready. To do something about your life before it is too late. Every word that comes from God is a warning. Thank God. Amen. It's like red lights going on. Red lights everywhere. Red lights, red lights, red lights. What does it mean? Hmm? If you're going the right track, it'll be green light. Go ahead. But if you have too many red lights <laughs> and the siren going on, it says, hey, watch, apply brakes. Hmm? See the direction? Go on the right path. Amen? Shake yourself. And ask for a moment. Does whatever I think, I do, I say, is it right? Whatever I decide, is it right? Am I walking in the ways of God? Am I under the influence of God? Or am I under the influence of the ruler of the air, Satan? Or are you living a life of a believer? Do you live like a disciple of Jesus Christ? Do you have values that are totally different from the rest of the world? What does people see in you? Who are you? What do you have to say? What fills you? What controls you? What abides in your spirit and soul and body? I want to tell everybody this morning, according to the word of God, Jesus full of the Holy Spirit. Somebody shout and say, Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. So be you. Be filled with the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. The Bible says, John 3, 34, it says, God gives the Spirit without limit. Somebody say, God gives the Spirit without limit. When was the last time you, you prayed to God saying, Lord, give me thy spirit. Don't allow the devil to lead you. Don't allow the demonic thoughts to control your life. Your battle is here. It must be won by the word of God through faith that comes from the word of God. And I pray, I want to decree and declare that each one of us here who is listening under the influence of my voice, to my voice right now, you be filled by the Holy Spirit. Amen. Hallelujah. As for the Holy Spirit to fill you every day. Hallelujah. Fullness of the power of God. Fullness of the Holy Spirit. So that you may live a life of success. Productivity. So that you can be a winner in life. Stand with me. Thirsty
Oh, oh Jesus, we are thirsty for more of you. One last time. We are hungry. We are hungry. We are hungry for more of you. We are thirsty. Oh, oh Jesus. If you say in your heart this morning, yes, I want God to fill me with His Spirit. I'm going to pray with you, Pastor, right now, and I'm going to keep on praying every day that God will fill me with the power and the fullness of the Holy Spirit. What is written about Jesus will become a reality in my life. Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit. So you will be full of the Holy Spirit. I want to pray with you right now. Lift up your right hand, whatever you want, and get connected to me. Lift your hand and get connected to me. Your hand being lifted up is a sign of me being connected to you with one accord in agreement. As I'm going to pray, God's going to release His Holy Spirit upon your life that you may be filled once again. Hallelujah. Even those who watch us through the television, all over Canada, across the world, I pray that you will touch the television and you will pray along with us right now. The Spirit of God will fill you as never before. Heavenly Father God, we pray right now as the Bible says, Jesus full of the Holy Spirit. So we pray, oh God, for everyone who agrees with me saying, I need the fullness of the Holy Spirit. You promised us, oh God, through your son Joel, oh, I will pour out my spirit upon all those who are flesh in the last days. We are living in the last days, so oh God. So I pray in agreement with every one of us here, based on the word, you will pour out your spirit and fill every Everyone with the Holy Spirit of God. Let everybody here speak in tongues, oh Father. Fill them, fill them, Lord. Every contrary spirit, every demonic spirit, every spirit of sin, every spirit of the world that comes against their life. We bind, we break its power in the name of Yeshua, of Messiah, oh God. Every chain be broken this morning. Every contrary spirit which is not from God, I decree and declare in the mighty name of Jesus. Leave God's people right now. Fill them with your spirit, of God. Fill them with your spirit. Every spirit which is not of God, you will not abide in this place. We cast you out of every one of us, our families, in Jesus' name. Fill them with your Holy Spirit, oh God. Spirit of love, spirit of joy, spirit of peace, spirit of kindness, spirit of goodness, oh faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Fill them, Lord. Our prayers to leave this place. Let them know the joy of the Holy Spirit is their strength. And they're going to be filled by your spirit every day as they're going to pray and ask for the same of God. I bless God's people this morning in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and in the name of the Holy Spirit of God. This we ask in Jesus' mighty name. God's people say, Amen. Amen.